talking about cyber forensic or digital forensic in general, it's good to know about the market size as it is right now. Since about uh, 2018, um, the uh, global digital forensic market was at about $4.5 billion um, for that year. And um, in 2019, we are seeing it somewhere around $5 billion. And what does that mean to us? It is more important that we understand how is this market going to grow? How fast is it? How large it's going to grow? And um, how can you play a part in this market? So first and foremost, in a separate report, there is an expectation that the market itself is going to reach about $14.3 billion in the next six to seven years to come. And it's also important that probably you need to know how it translates into what's meaningful for you. So from 4.5 to 14.3, the difference is about $10 billion a year by 2027. So which means from today, as it start growing for the next six to seven years, there will be a new $10 billion market generated just within the digital forensic segment globally. And what's exciting will be then, you want to know how can you be part of this $10 billion market you know, that is going to be created from today onwards. And you may be happy to know that the expectations of this growth will be clocked majority from the Asia Pacific in the years ahead. So that's a good thing for us, right? And of course, I mean, now that we understand or now that we know that there's such a report to say that the digital forensic market is continuing to grow for the next six, seven years, good to know that. But maybe it's important for us to also know what's driving it. Is this drivers going to slow down? in the future, because if I'm going to choose a career, I want to choose a career that's going to you know, give me a good long run, right? Long and fast run, isn't it? So let's take a look on my next slide. And um, to understand that, let's look at some definition of what is cyber forensic. It is a task of identifying, preserving, analyzing and presenting the digital data in an acceptable form by the court of law. So this task that you're carrying out for, right, comprises this series of actions, identifying, presenting, uh, preserving, analyzing and presenting, right, the digital data in the acceptable form by the court of law. So Wow, okay, so it seems like a very, um, uh, a very um, detailed job, you know, that we need to do. And, and how does it relate to the growth of the cyber market? So let's look at the next slide and see if that gives you a little bit more information. Last year, in the year of 2019 alone, Cybercrime related, uh, cybercrime related cost worldwide about two trillion dollar losses, and those are what's recorded. So in a year, the world has seen cybercrime cost them more than two trillion dollars, and that's a lot of money, a lot of value lost. And how big is that related to something that is a little bit close to our heart? If we just look at ASEAN alone, ASEAN GDP in a year is just a mere $2.95 trillion as compared to what cybercrime is globally, which is almost two thirds of the entire ASEAN GDP in a year. And this is expected to grow. In the next two or three years, the expectation is this is going to reach almost $6 trillion, which means it's going to double the entire ASEAN GDP. That's how huge the cybercrime market is right now. And why is it so? You know, 
as it is right now, the, the record that will track, it shows that there is an attack by a hacker every 39 seconds. So that equates to almost 2,244 times a day. So that tells you the, the, the volume that we are seeing, which means since the time that we started our presentation till now, we easily have more than 20 attacks that's recorded, right? That's how severe it is. And with regards to digital forensic, this particular job is a crucial aspect of the law and businesses across the world in the internet age. And it can be very rewarding and lucrative career path. As a result, you could see that is with the volume of the amount of cyber crimes is happening across the world today. And what is expecting to grow into in the next few years, it is not surprising to see that is cyber forensic or digital forensic, it becomes a more demanding skill set in the world because whenever there is a breach of data, the digital forensic team will be caught in. Right? And again, why are they caught in? If I would just move back the slide, just a couple of slides. Remember this task? They are caught in to identify the data that are critical or important to that breach. They are required to preserve this data so that the data remain is it keeps its integrity and it is accepted by the court of law. You need to analyze the data so that you can actually find out the um, source, potentially find out the source of the problem, all right, and evaluate how you can prevent the same issue from happening in the future. And essentially, if you need to um, uh, prosecute some people, all right, you need to be able to present such data that are acceptable by the court of law. So therefore, the cyber forensic team will have to be brought in to the scene of the data breach. And this is critical because you need to follow a rigor of processes before the data will still be acceptable by the court of law. All right? Otherwise, if you do not manage the data that you identified or collected during that process, those data may lose its integrity and which means even if you have a good case, it's not going to be accepted by the court of law, right? So it's, it's a professional skill, professional sets of uh, knowledge and therefore you require to go through a professional uh, course to really learn this skill and the requirement. And um, it is also good to know that um, from some of the survey, as it shown here, in cybersecurity professional that uh, holds a certification generally have a significantly higher pay than those that without. So in this example, is, is, sorry, in these findings, it shows across the five continents of the world, the North American, the Latin Americans, the Europe, Asia Pac, and in general, in average, those who are holding a certificate averagely receive a significantly higher salary than the rest. So that also tells you that how the industrial treasure professional that holds a qualification, a recognized qualification, a recognized certifications in hiring them to perform the job. And of course, there are many reasons behind supporting that um, reward, you know, and I'm going to share with you some of these after the slide. So till now, we, we just went through a couple of slides that give us a very quick understanding into the current cyber market especially related to cyber forensic. First and foremost, we have a brief understanding of the job scope as a cyber forensic professional, right? And then next, we understand that these guys, this professional will be required and be caught in whenever there is a breach of data. 
or some things that is required forensic team to come in to do a investigation on the data. And because of the amount of hacks that is going through the world right now, and what it costs the businesses and the government of the world, more than $2 trillion a year right now, that calls for a lot of investment from both the public and private sector to invest into um, facility, to invest into people, to acquire the proper skill set. And of course, it translates into the amount of salary that they are paying these people. So here it comes, that is showing you the introductions, introducing the CHFI of EC Council, the world's most comprehensive computer forensic certification program. And before we go on a little bit into the program, just want to share with you a little bit about EC Council. If you have not already heard about EC Council, EC Council has been established for the past 21 years. And in the past 21 years, we have, been, we have grown into a world-class cybersecurity consulting, education, training, and certifications uh, body in the world. And um, that means we reach up to not only in the training and certifications, we also have our own university doing the part of the academic education, as well as our consulting services arm. And with this, of the, 20, of the 20 years, we have trained no less than 350,000 members, and we have certified currently more than 220,000 members on board right now. So, of course, this is done not by EC Council ourselves alone. This is done through our thousands of partners across more than 140 countries. We have currently more than 2,700 partners, and Avantis is one of them in Singapore offering our CHFI course. And uh, of course, these course are trained and delivered by our EC Council certified instructor. And that is done using more than 3,000 tools and technology that EC Council provided within our student portal, right? But most importantly, I need you to understand, these courses are not created and written just by EC Council ourselves. We understand the importance to ensure that the certification is relevant to the current market, is relevant to what the employer wants. So we work with more than 350 subject matter experts in the market to ensure that we are constantly updating our, inf our content and make it relevant so that our certified members are always needed in the market. So let me come to these CHFI programs of EC Council. And um, the CHFI program, first and foremost, you may want to know that is who is it for, right? I mean, what is this digital and cyber forensic skill set required for? So of course, first and foremost, anyone who are interested in the cyber forensic and investigations field can take these certificates. And the rest of it gives you a broad category of the industry and of the uh, project that you may be handling and you will understand how, how, how is this relevant to you, right? Um, if you work with the legal consulting firm, the law firms, law enforcement uh, office, and uh, police officers, so forth, so forth um, federal and government agency, incident response team, security manager, network defenders, you know, um, security analysts. So if you're in such field, by and large, it is important for you to understand and know cyber forensic skill set, how the whole process works, because whether are you being the cyber forensic team yourself or you are working with a cyber forensic team, it is very important for you to understand 
the role, the tools, the importance of how they're handling data. So you could either work with them well, or you could know what to do properly if you are the cyber forensic team. So it, it covers a broad scheme, right? And within the, within the um, CHFI program, we cover a wide range of required skill set and tools that you will be learning. First and foremost, CHFI is a vendor agnostic program, which means we do not um, tie our certification to certain vendor in the market only. We basically teach you all important skill set and important tools, most popular tools that are used by cyber forensic um, professional. So you will be assured that you'll be acquiring knowledge and skill set that are useful to you in the career development. So these are a set of modules that you will be learning. And of course, as you could see, it covers a wide range. So you will look at forensic related matters, not only on basic networking forensic, you will look at cloud forensic, you will look at database forensic, you will look at malware forensic, you will look at mobile forensic. And most importantly, you will be given templates and practices to do up an investigative report. Because remember, one of the core tasks of an investigator is to be able to prepare a report that are submissible and recognized by the court of law. All right, so as good as saying that is because with this template, somehow you got a set of material and documents that you could immediately apply to your job role. All right, so that's helped you to do a kickstart from what the programs provided as well. And um, of course, the reason why CHFI program for the last 20 years has been achieving a lot of acceptance in the market. It is not by chance. It is very much by design, by the 20 years of hard work and carefully um, thought through processes. Let me bring you through this so that you are assured and understand why such a certifications constantly receiving, all right, well um, reviews and well acceptance by the industry. First and foremost, the program itself currently are endorsed by crit mission critical organizations. Organizations such as the Department of Defense from the United States, such as GCHQ, all right, from the UK, such as the NSA, the National Security Agency of the United States. So when you have a program like this, which are endorsed by critical um, organizations such as this listed here, which, indi which indicating that it is mandatory for their cybersecurity professional working with this organization to be certified with CHFI. You will understand that is, well, the program must have went through a rigor um, design assessment so that anyone who gain the qualification, the credential are accepted by these organizations. And of course, ever since the last 10 years, EC Council has been selected by the Pentagon to train their cyber workforce. So not only that, the development of CHFI is according to an international quality standard. So we CHFI development actually gained a NC accreditation under the 1724 scheme. So this is actually an ISO endorsement. What does it say? It says that is as it actually audited EC Council in the way how we develop our course, how we write our program, how we prepare our assessment, how we manage and run our assessment and how we award our certificate in meet up with the stringent requirement of this ISO standard. So that gives you the assurance that is okay, cool, which means EC Council assess these certifications that will be recognized by the world is because there is a international auditor that comes in to audit the way how we actually manage the process. So the quality of the assessment and the certifications are assured by this third party, 
all right? And that's why the industry feel comfortable to recognize and um, treasure the value of the CHFI certificate. Then the next thing you want to know, okay, good. I know that your content development and uh, certifications assessments are of international standard. But how about your content? Is it needed and want by the industry? So that is something that is important because you do not want to have a certifications that the content are written by some um, rocket science scientists and to say that is, this is a very high end and very um, good content but unfortunately, the application of the content are not widely accepted, which means it is probably only usable by certain important groups, even the content is critical and important. But if you want to get a job in the general market, you want to know that what skill sets and the skill set and the knowledge that you acquired is, is needed, you know, so that your employer actually recognize your certificates, right? So for Easy Council, when we create and develop our content, we want to assure that our, certifi our uh, certified members will eventually hold a qualification that the world wants it. So what we do is we map our content against a global framework, such as the NICE framework. The NICE is a national initiative of cybersecurity applications that comes under the NIST framework. It is actually a tripartite effort by the government that can meet people and the private sector coming together and write out these um, skills frameworks in cybersecurity, indicating clearly by the job role what kind of skill set and what kind of ability is required. All right, so from there, we design and we understand what the world is looking for, so we design our CHFI qualification against this framework so that the skill set acquired by from the CHFI certificates are assured to be needed by your future employer or your current employer. So that's important. And of course, with all this being done and said, right, we get an end result of being recognized by the industry. All right, and that it shows from various sources of um, articles that you can find. For example, one of these shows that the best digital forensic certification 2018, CHFI is one of the top. And um, another one in um, the best digital forensic certifications in 2019, CHFI also comes on one of the top in this article. And on the next articles here, it actually shows a salary survey where they have done a survey with more than 56,000 professional holder of certifications where each of these uh, professional holds more than 800 different certifications. And the result came out that EC Council has three of our qualifications a whole by salary, uh, salary re holder that rank top 50 globally. So these are IT professional that is holding EC Council certification such as CHFI rank at top number 35, right? Being rewarded with salary at this top ranking. So that shows you the recognitions of the certificates by the industry. And what you're getting today is all this value that I have shared with you, a certificates that are globally recognized, endorsed by critical um, organizations from the United States and from the UK, a certifications that are carefully designed, all right, following the mapping of what the world wanted from a cyber forensic professional, a certifications that are also endorsed by a international standard organizations that shows that the way we design the course and the way we assess it are of international standard. And the certifications in the past 20 years has been globally accepted by employer of the world. All right, showing you that this is one of the best certificates 
and showing you that they're willing to pay you one of the best salary across the world too. And these qualifications and certificates is brought to you now by Advantis, incorporating within the graduate diploma in digital forensic and cyber security from Advantis. So here it goes. That is all the value within one package and the best of both worlds where you will get an academic graduate diploma from a recognized provider, Advantis, and an international certifications that are globally recognized. So certainly with this advantage, both and all in one, all right, it gives you an added value into your career advancement and career development in the cyber forensic world. So that will conclude my presentations this evening. And um, I shall move on to answer some of your questions. Ling Ling, would you like to say something before I start answering some of the questions? Hi, yes. Uh, thank you, Riven, for the session. Uh, so if any of y'all have any questions about the graduate diploma or the CHFI courses, you can give me a call or drop me a note. I, I'm available um, for, for uh, if you need any help in anything. So I would like to open the floor to the public if you have any questions about this session or you have any questions about um, general cybersecurity, digital forensics information. We'll be happy to, to, to answer any questions of this. Anybody? Uh, okay, and Gracia, so far our students who are in the graduate diploma course, 50 to 60% are students from the relevant industry. They can be in the IT sectors or that. The rest of the 40 to 40% 40 of the students are not in the, the IT field. So what would we recommend them to do is to join the course earlier, prepare themselves by going through the materials. So when they, the lecturers is there to help them, they are more prepared. They know um, what is the classes about and what are so some, some of the questions they have in mind. Students have been coping well so far, I would say. I think I would just like to add on to what you have huh? just said. Right. Um, so um, certainly this is one of the very important questions to answer. If you ask me, would it be easier for uh, someone with IT background to uh, go through this course? Definitely, it will be much easier. All right, because um, of the technical terms that will be used in this course. But nonetheless, it is not a requirement all right, for you to know because you will going to be learned as a user of IT instead of being an IT developer or IT designer, so to speak. Because in this particular course, the skill set that you'll be used learning is very much on the uh, cyber and digital forensic. All right, the methodology, the, the process itself, and um, the concept, then you will be using some forensic tools to help you um, uh, to perform the task. So you will be learning how to use those tools. And um, well, certainly, I mean, like I say, knowing some of the technical terms may help you understand easier and faster, but that doesn't mean it's essential. All right, so uh, I agree to what Lening say. If you, without the IT background, but if you would put in the additional um, uh, work to get yourself prepared for the course, read out the material first, I'm sure you will be going through the, you know, the course just right well. But nonetheless, it is an international qualification. I'm talking about the CHFI because that is going to be a separate exam 
from the uh, graduate diploma examinations. So that examination from CHFI, because being an international certification, there is certain kind of um, uh, requirement in a way which means you still expect you to perform up to at least a 70% of pass rate uh, before you can attain that qualifications. Um, from an international perspective, we have so far gaining pretty good uh, pass rate because the material that we have prepared for the students are awfully sufficient. All right, this is one of what EC Council is popular for. We give the student a comprehensive set of material so that you are well prepared. But it will not work if you, if you want to go by the shortcut way. All right, trying to just read some of the haters and trying to prepare for the exam and try your luck, then that, of course, you'll be tough. But if you put in your effort, I'm sure you'll be okay. I have a question here. Um, the kind of cybersecurity forensic tools that will be taught um, basically, um, all the popular forensic tools you will definitely be uh, taught during the class. We will not be teaching you all the tools, but most of the tools are made available for you on the EC Council student portal, right? So the trainer will usually teach you the top three most uh, popular tools, for example, like NCASE. NCASE is basically used by um, uh, the major law enforcement team in the world maybe probably 80% of them, at least, if not all. So the other one is probably Wireshark. So some of these popular tools will definitely be, be taught during the class. Do we need to be cybersecurity technical inclined? No, my answer will be the same as before. There is no prerequisite in IT skill or technical skill. But with any background in IT or cybersecurity will certainly help you in the understanding faster and easier. But otherwise, just work a little bit harder, you'll be all right. <laughs> 